Wednesday. Master Trainer Kiyoma Leah back with you guys again for another sequence. Now this week we are doing Sugar Busters. This is absolutely my very favorite series to teach because it is all about empowering your body to help itself, mostly through movement. But, of course, on Wellness Wednesday, I always like to share additional things. So last week, I discovered this Lucuma powder. And I was going to talk about it last week because it's a low glycemic sweetener. But since I knew I was doing Sugar Busters by request this week, I really wanted to make sure that it was available for everyone this week and I could talk about this new little superfood. It's billed as a superfood. It says it right here, plant-based superfood on the label. Now, here's the thing, a little bit about this little goodie right here. It is from South America, primarily Peru and those type of areas right there. It's a naturally occurring fruit that grows and of course in that area, they eat it fresh. It does not shelf keep very well at all. So that's where this powder comes into play that compression dehydration to powder out the food so it will last because a lot of the times the water is what helps things rot quickly. So we can actually have it here in the United States and other colder climates where this wouldn't grow naturally is the whole idea behind this. Very high in antioxidants, high in fiber. It actually says on the back that there are two grams of dietary fiber per serving, two teaspoons as a serving, and it's only 20 calories. So you're getting a good eight calories of that from fiber, which is a pretty good number. You actually also get lots of antioxidants and things of that nature from this, and it's low glycemic. People like to describe it as like a cross between sweet potatoes and some of your other sweeteners like stevia and things of that nature. Now, I bought it because it was a powder and I was looking for alternatives for powdered sugar to make frosting with. That does not work, just so you know. It separated out from the fat in the icing and my icing ended up a gloppy mess, so don't use it for that. I should have read a little bit more about it before I bought it and tried it without. So the next thing I did was I tried it in my tea for several days, thinking, well, if it doesn't dissolve in fat, it'll probably dissolve in boiling water. No again. It really only, and if you read a lot of the websites that talk about this powder, it really only is good as a supplement within your smoothies in the morning. So that's where you're best using it. Use it as a sweetener in your smoothies instead of honey or maple syrup. It's got fewer calories. It's got the lower glycemic impact and things like that. But here's the other thing. I am not in any way, shape, or form of South American descent. And after four days of taking this powder, one way or another, each day, my gut really flared up. Now you guys know, if you've been following my channel long enough, that if something's gonna upset somebody's stomach, it's gonna be me. My gastrointestinal issues have been something that I have fought with tooth and nail for over 20 years. And it is a lot of different circumstances for a lot of different reasons. Small intestinal, bacterial overgrowth, candida issues, adhesions in my gut, low digestive enzymes, all of these things contribute. And without a very, very specific, explicit balance of all these things, I can just boop, off the edge I go. And that's what happened. Off the edge I went using this. Now one of the things that Teresa Tapp used to talk about in her personal profiling, which is the only DVD I'm actually featured in at any point in time, was that our descent makes a difference. Now we're talking about this was 20 years ago she was talking this. The reality is the woman was talking it 40 years ago as well. Today we know that field of study as nutrigenomics or nutrigenetics. There's a slight difference between the two depending on what you're looking at but getting a genetic profile makes a big difference to help you determine your specific diet and supplementation regimen. Working with a registered 
functional nutrition or a functional doctor is going to help you with that. And I've had several of those tests. But even outside of that, the information that Teresa always talked about was simply our ethnic heritage. I am German, English, Scottish, French, Polish, and Austrian. No South American blood in there whatsoever. So something that is native to South America and Peru and that area of the world is not necessarily appropriate for me because my body genetically is not programmed to digest it. It's kind of a simple rule of thumb, but where are you from? What type of ethnic foods actually work for you? Another great example of this is vegetarian and veganism. Some people do not do well in that type of diet simply because their genetics really don't provide for it. But people from places like India, where this has been in practice for thousands upon thousands of years, are perfectly fine on a vegetarian and vegan diet. So we really need to understand who we are and where we came from. And nowadays there are so many tools to help us find that information and learn more of it. It's really amazing. Back when I was doing T-Tap and in this video all those years ago, there was just Teresa Tap and a couple others like Dr. Diadamo out there talking about eating right for your blood type, eating right for your genetic heritage, and all of that good stuff. It really has come a very long way in the 20 to 30 years that it's been scientifically studied. So if something like this doesn't work for you, there might be a reason behind it. Always, 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 no matter what all of the reading and research and the latest marketing tools tell you, follow what your body says. So, does anybody want some lacuma powder? All right, you guys, that's my spiel for this week. Happy Wellness Wednesday. I'm Kia Malia. I want to see you move, live, and thrive. I'll see you on the next one.